Thank you very much for having me here. And I think by looking at everybody's project, I see this as a puzzle. And I think that we almost self-organize ourselves and bring in this big complexity together. And I definitely have a lot of hope after being here with you guys during these last two days. Um, our program, as he mentioned, is identified as a leadership thought in the nation. And uh, we have 100% transfer and 100% job placement. And the seven architecture studio uh, directed by Mr. Rendler um, is the most precise geospatial repository for decision making, uh, utilizing the life cycle of a building. So just really quick, some realities. I think we can all conclude that we are out of balance. That obviously at all levels of society, we can see that in many levels, our communities are not working. The good news is that there's a lot of new um, ideas, uh, a lot of uh, understanding that there are multiple intelligences and there's new ways to embrace the world. Another very strong reality is these geospatial tools, social media, geodesign, 3D printing, and basically just like when we discover the compass and all those different instruments, it changed the perception of how we look at ourselves and how we look at the planet Earth. I believe that these new tools are exactly doing the same thing. How do we relate ourselves with the planet Earth? So we basically have a challenge, and I think this is a little bit about what Brad Fern was talking about. The reality is that it's so complex because we all know that this is an ecosystem. The natural environment, the human environment, the economy, and the built environment, the reality is that all these taxonomies, all these ontologies, they all need to come together if we want to make it uh, sustainable. So I believe that we're actually co-creators, and I think we are our MPO organisms, and the solutions that are going to sustain in our businesses, in our environments, are going to be uh, to interconnect all these different um, spheres of knowledge. They're going to have to be interconnected and interdependent. So something that we usually do not emphasize enough with the geospatial tools is the whole idea, kind of like they were talking about the Bill of Rights, that has to do with social justice. And I think that um, we all have the right to be safe, To and you guys are going to see examples of how we have utilized these geomedia tools to exemplify that uh, Grassroots environment in our communities could actually provide that interconnection from the top to the bottom as a parallel system, not as instead of, but actually something parallel that can create a catalyst in our society and in our community, an agent. They used that word before, which I loved. So uh, one of our challenges is that the mechanical age has kind of like segmented knowledge, segmented departments, and created a lot of island, uh, silos. And it has created also a society based on consumption instead of creation. And I'm so happy to be after the previous speaker because I think design is a human right. So we have two proposals besides having these two amazing programs happening. I'm hoping that there's two kind of like forces that kind of organize our thoughts. One is called the bio data model. And the second one is the cyber one I see. And the bio data model is mathematical, it's conceptual, it's a super organism, it's a framework. And it's a new way to look at data. And I actually have an analog model, <laughs> low-tech model. And basically, um, this model allows, uh, many times we say like, we all know now that one size does not fit all, right? So if we look at what are the 12 needs of a community, and sometimes the community might need a lot of, you know, urgent water uh, solutions, or it might require transportation, but the reality is that we require to look at multiple points of view all at the same time, but with this integrity model, it will allow us to see when you have too much tension or you have too much collaboration. We have it digital and we have it as a parametrically driven design. There's still a lot of studies to do about it, but you can see how um, when one bubble breaks, you can start 
bring it into the second model and start using organisms to start looking at our communities, looking at our neighborhoods, even looking at our enterprise solutions. And I think when you can actually touch it and manipulate it, you can start understanding that we require multiple points of view. And then when you connect multiple points of view, you have frames of reference. And then that's why we actually utilize all these terms when we speak. But in the medieval ages, we were not allowed to think in models. So I think this is one of the problems and some of the things that are blocking our education and our way of thinking. We got to think with literally models, models that we can represent our thoughts. And I'm going to pass it around. And the last one that can manipulate the model, they can bring it back here, please, <laughs> so you can actually feel it. Thank you. So, you know, I'm not the inventor. I'm just kind of like a puzzle maker or, a puzzle, you know, putting a puzzle together. I recommend you to read the operating manual uh, for the spaceship planet Earth by Buck, Mr. Spooler. He was talking about general systems and kind of talking about the big to the small and the small to the big. And we really need to consider all these variables. And the beauty of these now is there's a lot of scholars that have been using it for the theory of one, the design of instruments spiritual dancing, uh, solving uh, political problems in uh, UNESCO, uh, even doctors, you know. Uh, so it's been used actually for in multiple fields. And here in this uh, diagram, you can start seeing this is actually um, a tensegrity of a cancer cell, and this is a healthy cell. And then we're beginning to do some analogies with biomimicry and seeing how networks that are not so healthy, not very productive, look kind of like a cancer cell and uh, healthy cells look like healthy networks. And uh, so if we could start you know, utilizing this uh, tensegrity model, this biodata model, as a, actually a way to say it's not about creativity or productivity. It's not about, you know, finding a job or transfer. You actually use, this is where diversity is very important. You need multiple people sometimes in a conversation to keep the conversation balanced. If we have too many people thinking just one way, um, most likely that sphere is going to collapse. So we've been using uh, this biomodel concept, this tensegrity model, just really quick for education. We believe that education, holistic education, is that everybody comes to the planet Earth with a mission in life and the role of an educator is to help him or her discover it through connection with the community, the environment, and a meaning and purpose. It's, uh, uh, these are all our students and we geocoded all the students. Um, in our district and uh, then we're able to see what they are interested to to grow and to participate in their community so we actually utilize every single zip code in the los angeles county where we were able to create some kind of taxonomy where we put everything about the ecology the environment education economy and it's kind of like a basic map where uh, faculty, administrators, and neighborhood councils, it's been used by a lot of neighborhood councils in Los Angeles, can quickly see, you know, this is representing the nine colleges, all the high schools, that's Pierce College, all the high schools around it, how many um, academies the high schools have around the school, uh, how many have they graduated, and so forth. And then, uh, so it's basically just like a template, and you can see kind of like once you understand kind of this holistic approach and fractal model from the macro to the micro, you can see how it can help you organize instead of a 2D understanding of the planet or a kind of like a three-dimensional understanding and, and the idea to accept complexity, that there's always going to be a lot of variables. We actually utilize this map to purchase two of our satellites. Um, for the nine community college district. I'm one of the nine, and we have a, a really large bond program, six million billion with a B, and Michael is gonna be talking more about it. So this is just. So another way we utilize the tensegrity model, the bio uh, data model is because as you guys know, in the community colleges, uh, our students come from at different levels. Some even come with degrees from prestigious universities from Europe. And then here we are as, as teachers. We have different tasks and different objectives and student learning outcomes. So what we developed is that um, this student obviously has a lot of skills and talent. 
It's going, and the assignment is pretty easy. It's going to be pretty boring. And this student, he has very little skills and background. This student is going to be frustrated, and education does not happen. Engagement does not happen. So when we utilize project-based curriculum, where the curriculum is actually connected to the community, you'll be designing a fountain, a drinking fountain, a bench, a map, uh, geospatial repository. Students become very engaged, and the way that we make sure that they're, you know, making sure there's 12 variables to make sure that that student stays in balance. Still, we have still a lot of work and development on it, but it creates a sense of transparency of how these points actually move and it becomes almost like a game, right? I can imagine it in Second Life, you're walking with your, you know, how much have you learned in each of the classes? And the students become so passionate that even when you tell them you cannot take the models, they all went to take a photograph. These are high school students at 7 o'clock in the morning in downtown Los Angeles traveling two hours away because there's not too many places that are public where people can access design. So um, very quickly, I'm going to talk about this because if there's one thing uh, I developed during my NASA uh, fellowship um, is this connection with nature. And I think that's why a lot of our students don't get engaged. I'm going to go super quick. And it's just this idea that we want to belong. We want to understand how we connect to the built environment. And I think tools are uh, 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 disciplines are only tools. We invented geometry to understand form. We invented astronomy to understand movement. And we created music to understand patterns and cycles. But we became so specialized that we forgot what we were studying. And then just really quick, we did transportation. We did a lot of carbon footprint for transportation. Each dot is, we teach 180,000 students from the nine community colleges. This is the blue line. Where are the, you know, the um, green academies next to the green line? We're studying, uh, these are architecture services. This is Sunset Boulevard, Santa Monica. You can see inner city, no services as far as developing houses. And we're developing the Green Idea House. We're going to start building. We did uh, the street vendors that naturally they park next to areas where there's no food, there's no um, uh, healthy fruit around those neighborhoods, so we utilize it for that. And then after this, I'm going to leave it to Michael. How are we using it for the life cycle of a building? Thank you. Good job, Marcel. <laughs> okay, um, the GeoDesign uh, Summit. Maybe we want to also call it the Geo Operational Summit because what we were asked to do is to um, build an operational model for the LACCD. And to build that model, we needed to know what a federal enterprise architecture is. And that means the idea that you document across your agencies your workflow and processes and be able to exchange the data across those, those groups. So to be able to do that, we uh, got involved with this uh, diagram that actually Marcella developed. And this diagram is an extension of what she's talking about, interdependencies and codependencies. And to build something like this in what we're building is a $6 billion bond program with 80 high-performance buildings in uh, the greater Los Angeles County area, we needed to have a set of standards that all our design teams would operate within and be able to deliver that data back into a unified data model that we could then migrate into a GIS system. And the decision-making process that was used to build this federal enterprise architecture looked at life cycle. And we've talked a lot about design in the first phasing of the project, the plan and design, but we haven't really talked too much. To, I haven't seen in the conference about construction and about equipment, FF&E fixture equipment, and then our operational phase and how these facilities in the LA Community College District, 220 buildings, educating, as Marcel says, a quarter of a million people in Los Angeles, they need to optimize their dollars. And to optimize the dollars, they need to have uh, metrics that they can measure against. And to measure that, you need quantifiable information. So what um, we proposed, and at the beginning of the conference, they said, you need a 20-year a vision. This is a 20-year vision of Marcel and I. We've been working on this 20 years now. And the first uh, part of it is, uh, let's see if we can get these other ones working here. Okay, 
Um, what, what we have here is we have a series of our campuses. Um, I think you can get this one running here. Yeah. Okay. And these are just a few examples of animation. Now, you all know about animation, but this is building information modeling, which I'm going to go into a little bit more. The, every piece of these environments, um, including the landscape environments, are actual geospatial objects. They've been modeled by students. Everything that you see in this presentation is created by students in the Los Angeles Community College District. They work in a nonprofit environment, a studio that we set up in South Central. We have 50 students that work one year in the studio, and they're working on this complete workflow to build an operational model. So we not only have built the visualization side of this, but we've also, which you'll see in a minute, we've also gone into the energy simulation and the energy modeling called the building performance side of this, so that we can then manage that SCADA array that will end up on this campus, and we'll be able to do what's called predictive maintenance and predictive performance. We'll actually know by simulation how each one of these facilities and these environments will operate at any time of the day under any weather condition, and including how we'll maintain and manage that. So when the district came to us and said, we're going to build this uh, $6 billion bond program, they asked somebody to, to manage the data. I think we can go to the next one. So all of that data that we have put in those building information models, we then migrated into a GIS portal. Uh, the data is stored in an Oracle spatial data set. Uh, we're serving that data set and managing that data set. So we've extracted the, the data, the utility infrastructure data, as well as the building information data from the models. And we store that in one data set. We built the portal front end. And we've integrated that portal into a BIM technology so that you can access these BIM models and manage the BIM models at the campus level. Um, and this is important for, for that standard that I showed you at the beginning. You can pause it there for a second. Um, if you see on the left-hand side there, that schema structure is a federal standard. And the reason we used a federal standard called SDS-FIE, this is developed by the military. This is what they're doing all the military bases for across the United States. And the intention of that is I didn't want to be tasked with deciding what the data dictionary was going to be looking like. When you have a project of this scale and they say, OK, you're in charge of standards, you go and you adopt national standards. So what the issue then becomes is how do you deploy this when you have industry partners that don't really understand how to collect the sewer uh, system or the stormwater system or the natural gas system in an infrastructure utility project like this. So when we want to have all the lights on the campus, we want to know whether the lights are on or the lights are off or how many watts they are or last time those lights were serviced, we needed to have the original infrastructure information in our geospatial environment. So these are just a couple of examples of what the portal could do. Um, simply, we felt it was pretty simple for the facility directors at the campus to utilize this. There was no application we needed to install. Again, we started this project eight years ago uh, before um, uh, some of the new tools that we've seen here today were on the market um, for this comprehe comprehensive vision. Okay, I think we could go to the next one. Um, so, this integration between the built environment and the natural environment uh, then goes into resources, and we have a little arrow there. So now we're going to talk just very briefly about energy and what we did with the energy modeling and the energy modeling simulations. So if you click up on the left side, one of the district-wide initiatives was to install central plants at each one of the campuses. And those central plants would then, the animation on the right-hand side there, is part of a product that we put in the lobby of each of the buildings that show the mechanical system, the heating and cooling systems inside of the building. So this data was all delivered to LACCD as CAD files, and the students reconstructed the buildings. And somebody say, wow, that's really laborious to go through and reconstruct the buildings. But what it's going to do is it's going to provide a uniform data set for the district that has three-dimensional data as well as IDs on all those parts that have to be maintained and managed, including all the VAVs 
inside of the building when they have to go in and replace one little filter inside of that building. Up on the left, you see the hot and cold water loops extending across the campus. So all of those water loops have to be monitored because there's pressure sensors, valve pressure sensors that have to be uh, managed in that system. So that's one of the campuses. These base models then are iterative. Design professionals then issue us models back. Those models go back into the master model and we can continue to iterate this environment. Um, this is uh, the next piece of it is uh, safety. This is an initiative I've been working on with the Department of Homeland Security, how I can then take these models and we can get that going there and get that. And what you can see here is this is the same campus. I've migrated the model, the full data model, which is geocoded to one eighth of an inch accuracy, registered through laser scanning, matching to Google Earth, has every, uh, every type of um, plant species accurately, all the topographies act. We can do all the ADA analysis, has all the blue phones has all the trash cans, has everything in the model. And down on the bottom there is a, uh, an interactive game that we've developed. So we've taken the data model, we brought the data model into a game engine. The game engine is played on a tablet and it's a multi-user environment. We presented this in Washington DC about uh, one week before the incident in, in Connecticut. So. Um, this idea of being able to use transparency, being able to look, being able to have access to the air handling systems, having access to the wiring systems, knowing what's connected, what circuitry is connected on the weekends if they have to shut a building down. And then the big one in operations is we need to turn the building on. How much does it cost to operate that building? Do we have the, the necessary metered information for that facility? Um, they have some, uh, he's going to spawn here in a second. You can move to different parts of the campuses. Again, this is a merging of disciplines. Computer science students in the district, nine colleges, uh, animators, uh, interactive designers coming together to, to develop a product. And what we are very confident about is unless the interface is really simple, quick to learn, I'm not going to get the facility department plumbers to get in there and pull the data out. So this idea of being able to access the data, bring the data into different types of environments, and be able to have multi-users involved in the environment is something that we wanted to make sure was part of our, our development. Up on the top here, we call this the, uh, the master plan model. Um, you saw it in detail. We're going up higher on one corner of the campus. Uh, this campus is about nine new lead high performance buildings that will be part of that um, central plant. And so uh, we had a partnership with the Environmental Defense Fund and the Environmental Defense Fund worked with us developing uh, an Energy Plus model to look at the idea of integration of what is the best way to run and operate your campus. So we're taking the geospatial tools and we're overlaying those tools with the, the smart building systems to know how. And then down at the bottom there, uh, it's up on the web and it's multi-user simultaneous uh, so that they can bring experts in from different locations and those experts then can help us to actually talk about how they may secure a certain portion of the campus or when you have multiple agencies show up on your campus, how are they going to behave? And that's also where a tool like this would allow them to conduct an exercise in a virtual environment. Uh, we were in discussions with some of the airports. We see applications. So the big picture idea is it's not the products that we're making, it's the model that students have a lot to contribute in this digital world and that by making the studio in Los Angeles, having these students, we feel that we've built a case study for uh, the United States to be able to have multi-users in one environment. I think Marcel has one more slide she's gonna talk to here. Okay, so um, we see that um, when the community 
can participate. We actually create sustainable solutions when they are active participants, not only in maintenance, but I think because of rapid prototyping, we can actually collect all the natural information of a community, we can collect all the built environment of a community, and most important, we can collect the human potential. Uh, through social media, through apps, I think that was a great, you know, uh, uh, opportunity to see where everybody's kind of coming from multiple directions and then whatever happens in the neighborhood, in the colleges or in this what I'm calling the seed or the cyber one, it can actually be made locally using the national intelligence and also utilizing the global market. And I think it has to do with we're actually changing this economic model, right, to quality from quantity to quality. And this is kind of like um, what we imagine that we can actually create, you know, this is a McDonald's tube and uh, chairs, recyclable chairs and games, we can produce and create sustainable solutions, we can produce and create um, uh, maps for the neighborhoods, we can produce and create shelters utilizing rapid prototype, geospatial tools, geomedia, and, um, and again, not as instead of, but more as a parallel solution to engage many people that are not participating in the conversation. And, um, and again, how are we going to, I don't know where the model is, because they're like, well, how do you choose? And I think each neighborhood, each community is unique. Right? So I think by utilizing this balance structure, I can tell us, you know what, you really are not considering the elderly in this community. Or you really have too much of these. Well, why don't you transfer, you know, virtually or uh, teleport some of the knowledge of certain faculty or certain businesses to another location in another city or in another part of the world so people can be working on their passion, on their mission. That's and fine. that's kind of, um, this is back in 1992. It's called La Semilla, and uh, those are petri dishes, and uh, we were thinking how, basically what we've been working for 20 years, how can we interconnect our neighborhoods, utilizing local, ta local talents, and uh, I think this um, technology utilizes visual thinkers, right, which is a different intelligence that is usually not necessarily embraced by traditional educational models. And I think visual thinkers and spatial thinkers uh, offer tremendous potential. And uh, with this, I want to also acknowledge I have two of my students here that tomorrow they're participating on the leadership for Skills USA. They're looking like, what does it mean to have the skill? Right? What is the skill in these days? So, thank you very much. <laughs>